The Cystic Fibrosis community is invited to participate in a series of videos on individuals that are living, breathing, succeeding with cystic fibrosis. This video, Life Pre and Post Double Lung Transplant with CF, was made possible through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech to the Boomer Esiason Foundation. Over 40% of the CF population is adults and living, breathing, and succeeding. Today you will meet Valerie Batch from Illinois, who is 52 years old with CF, post double lung transplant, 13 years, married and the proud mom of twins that are 22 years old now. After a successful career in sales for an international computer company, Valerie currently is involved speaking to groups about organ donation and fundraising for cystic fibrosis. Valerie also enjoys cooking, sewing, and riding her bike. My favorite food has got to be Italian. love Italian food. My dream vacation would be to go back to Paris because I lived in Paris when I was 20. I had way too much fun. My favorite holiday would have to be probably Christmas. Just because all my family comes here Christmas Eve, like 40 of them from my husband's side and my side. And it's just wonderful to be together. My name is Valerie Batts, and I'm 52 years old, I'm proud to say. And I, had a, I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at 22 months old, and I had a bilateral lung transplant 13 years ago. See, it didn't affect me that much. I guess I really didn't know what I had without computers. Um, but I was treated very normally by my parents, my family had the same expectations, had to behave, get good grades, go to college. I think what I remember most about growing up was the severe stomach aches. Missed some school because of that. Um, and a lot of coughing. You know, every day the coughing and the clearing the throat. The CF became more challenging I, living on my own once I went away. I went a thousand miles away to school and um, learning how to take care of myself. And if I did get sick, I was on my own uh, trying to get to the college clinic. Um, just uh, working and taking care of children later on, it just, it, it was hard to do all of it. And then eventually I ended up doing all the nebulizer treatments and the flutter and the vest. You know, it would take up to six hours a day. And that was tiring and exhausting and to fit that time in. It was mostly accepting that my lungs were failing me. And that's, I think, what was most upsetting, that I couldn't jump back quickly. Um, and then I would had more frequent visits to the hospital. And I did most of my IVs at home because I worked, and the kids, I hated to be away from them. So I did do a lot of the therapy at home. It's just, everything was so difficult because of the lack of oxygen. And then eventually, um, I became bedridden. It was just so difficult to get around. So all those factors. I went on the lung transplant list in uh, 97. I was um, only on the list for seven months at that time. I also wouldn't have lived longer than the seven months. So I was very fortunate. Um, and I got the first call and those lungs were a perfect match. And um, so fortunately I got those lungs when I needed them. Well, since the transplant, my life is so much better because I can breathe. I think that was the scariest thing before the transplant, just not being able to breathe. Um, and the first moment I woke up from anesthesia, from the transplant, I took a breath and I knew those were not my lungs. There's no gurgling mucus sound. It wasn't this shortness of breath to breathing fast. It was just this huge deep breath. Um, I always explain it. It's like when you find an old balloon on the side of the street that's smushed and cracked and stuck together. Those are my old lungs. And now today, it's like they put in two beautiful pink balloons and I just breathe so deep and fill them up. And it just, I wake up every morning and I have to take a deep breath just because I, you know, thoroughly appreciate my breathing and my lungs. Since the transplant, the only maintenance I have to do is the spirometry every day and take my weight and my blood pressure and my anti-rejection pills um, as well as there are some antibiotics and they're different for everybody that is standard protocol for transplant patients that I do take one of them Monday Wednesday and Friday and another one um, 
I guess just every day now. Yeah, every day. It changes with the protocol. It changes uh, for everyone. All the vitamins. Um, that's all the maintenance I do. And I sleep. I love to sleep. <laughs> Pre-transplant um, with all the nebulizers and epidural vests, it probably took six hours for daily maintenance, at least six hours. And different medications, but still medications. Eating was such an ordeal before the transplant. I don't know why. Just maintain the weight. And then the coughing so hard, I'd throw everything up. Um, Post-transplant, um, my maintenance probably takes, you know, five, ten minutes. Yeah, I have a lot more time to be happy, to play, to be with my kids. <laughs> In order to stay healthy, I just think... Um, um, you need to just be aware of not being around sick people, but making sure, I told my brother this after I had a transplant, because um, I went through training how to stay healthy, um, and now he with CF is 53 and still has an original lungs because he never, he does not touch his face anymore, and it sounds silly, but you really cannot take the gooby out of the eye, scratch the inside of your nose, lick the chocolate off your finger, those things you just can't do, because that's how you get germs. After the first year, um, I could do anything I wanted to do. You could go back to your sailing, your skiing, whatever it is that you normally do, um, you, you, know, you can go back to. Since the transplant, um, I have become obsessed with raising money for cystic fibrosis. You know, I do a walk here and there beforehand, but now um, I just can't do enough. They know they can call me and I'll do anything. I speak at events, I chair events. Um, I also speak at the high school on organ donation because I've, it's also obviously become very important to me. And I love to talk to the kids getting their driver's license to explain the process and talk about my story. So I even have a license plate that says transplantation works, lung recipient, because I'm very proud. I do enjoy cooking, you know, lots of different meals. So um, I am in the kitchen a lot. I have to maintain my weight, so I'm going to eat some good food, cooking for my family. I do enjoy that. Now I feel great. I, you know, my I'm pink. I have pink skin, and um, you know, it's funny when you're sick. The lack of oxygen, your hair is sick. Your skin is sick. Um, and I mean, I can just look in the mirror, and I look healthier. I feel healthier. I feel I can do anything that I want. I really could. My quality of life post-transplant on a 1 to 10 has got to be like a 20. It's phenomenal. I mean, I just, I can't imagine it could be any better. Why, why, why I wouldn't ever do it. I mean, I, or, you know, why somebody would want it. Live so much better than they were. It's incredible, incredible experience. I'm very blessed.